Hello. Hello everyone. This is Monk John from Thailand. This is my story channel and today we are going to uh, have a conversation. It's a Q&A session. But we scoped out the topic and we're going to talk mainly about anger. All right. So we already prepared some of the questions that people submitted to us over the past week. But if you have additional questions, you can also ask me um, at any time and our staff will choose your questions and bring the questions to me. All right. If you arrive already, you can also share your name, your country, where you come from. And also, um, if you can hear my voice properly, this is proper, uh, properly audible, you can also type plus one so that I, our staff and I know that uh, uh, the conversation is crisp and clear. And if you feel that this video is going to be useful for your friends or people that you care about that are dealing a lot with anger these days or who are getting angry very easily, you can also share this video to them as well. Maybe uh, there are some tips that are useful for those people and they are able to manage their own anger in a much better level. So we're going to wait for a few moments for people to arrive. At the moment, you can also share, uh, you can think about your questions, okay? And if you have any questions that you'd like to submit about anger, about resentment, Please don't hesitate because um, this is a very good chance so that we are not going to it's not going to be just a, only one directional conversation, but you know, like it's going to be more interactive and uh, you can communicate with me as well. Even though this is not like a video conferencing, but it would be best to actually. Um, have your questions and then I give you the answer and everything uh, is going to go with the flow okay so um, if you arrive already let me know where you are from and your name your country okay and uh, any questions about anger I think people these days they suffer from anger maybe because we live in the society where we are exposed by different medias and believe it or not every time you read something on internet whether they are from facebook whether you read or maybe you just look at some videos those media the text the images the voice <coughs> also carry some of emotional feelings from uh, different people, maybe from the artists themselves and also from uh, the comments that people put into the text. Sometimes you read some text and you started to feel, hey, what is this? And you started to feel irritated because of the text. Then you, you know immediately that the text also carry some um, hatred or maybe some anger from the writer to to the viewer, to the audience at last. And these days, because we consume ourselves very much with this thing, we are accumulating the anger in the mind, right? And whenever we have too much of the anger, then we actually do not know what to do. We are not <laughs> that smart somehow. So we tend to actually release this negative energy somewhere. Some people who choose not to release this negative energy at all, maybe that person will release negative energy to him or herself. While others will choose to release this negative energy to people around them who do not know at all what you've been through. So how do we deal with anger? How do we deal with resentment? Do you have such experience? Do you have any questions in mind? prepare your questions and also submit them in the comments below or maybe on the right. All right, so 
uh, I prepared some of the questions as well because people submitted the questions over the past week. So let's take a look at the definition of anger and resentment. What exactly is the anger? So this is question number one. All right, this is question number one. So um, as usual, we have people from um, Agnir from um, Latvia and Chopon from Kyrgyzstan, <laughs> Risa. Ah, Risa. It's nice to see you there. And Owen. Owen, I'm not sure if you are in Congo. The, the city names doesn't sound familiar to me. And also Sahar from Yemen. Actually, she's from Morocco but maybe she's doing something in Yemen and also Domingo from Spain. That's very nice and welcome all of you to our live sessions. So today, the topic will be anger and resentment. And I'm about to begin with the definition of anger at the moment. So what exactly is anger? Well, uh, if you search on internet, there are many good definitions out there already. But one thing that I really impressed me and I'm about to show to all of you, share to all of you, is the definition actually described by the Buddha. So anger, according to Buddha, is poisonous root. What does it mean? And sweet top, okay? Sweet top. So if you imagine kind of a tree, and this tree is or maybe it's like uh, vegetable. This vegetable is edible. And then you begin by eating the vegetable from the root. Um, maybe uh, like potatoes, maybe. <laughs> so that something that under the ground. And once you eat them, you started to feel that what you eat is poisonous, but somehow there is an urge in your mind telling you that you need to continue eating. And once you continue eating, maybe you are feeling to yourself that it doesn't actually be beneficial at all and it keeps uh, making you feel even worse. But once you finish the eating all the way to the top, to the uh, leaves, maybe to some flowers, then you started to feel very, very glad that you did it, that you have eaten everything. So this is compared to when humans have anger. When we have anger, not the way we think, the way we speak, the way we do, they're not going to be the same as we, when we do not have any anger, when we are normal. But the anger inside, this is going to force us to think and to speak and to do in a violent way. And this violent, once you complete it, you started to feel released at that particular moment. We're, we're talking about a particular moment, short-term effect, okay? So the short-term effect of anger is once you con conduct any kind of violence, or um, maybe you just think this way, you feel better. And this is the nature of anger. Anger will force you to do something negative so that you feel good. Okay. I hope this definition is pretty clear because otherwise you can always find like thousands of different definitions of anger very good one on internet, but this one actually um, is appealing to me. So something poisonous from the root, but once you complete it, the eating all the way to the top is pretty sweet. Anger forces us when the anger away, but once we finish, we feel good. At that particular moment, we're not going to talk about long-term effect, but short-term effect. You feel good just by thinking, speaking, and doing something negative, and that's anger. So the Buddha actually give um, one additional saying about anger, that anger is 
like rust on weapons. Um, if you imagine a blade, or if you imagine a sword, or maybe just an arrow, what if there are some rust on the blade, on the sword, and on the arrow? It won't be very useful, right? It won't be very effective to use those weapons to fight with your enemy. So if you put it this way, anger is going to deteriorate your capacity, your performance, your conscience, and eventually your happiness. It's like those rust that is going to eat all their weapons, all the sharpness of your knife, your blade, your sword, and everything. Think about it. What if some people say that this weapon is not just about your capacity, but the greatest weapon of all for human beings is our wisdom. Because we are smart. That's why our civilization is far better than any kinds of beings in the world, right? Because we are so smart. We can think about how we um, these days use artificial intelligence to make our life much better and also all the advanced technologies that we have. We fly into the sky higher than the birds. Anything that people could not imagine, like thousand, ten thousand years before, is happening at the moment. That's because the wisdoms, the intelligence of mankind. But what if this greatest weapon of mankind is devalued, is deteriorated? It's like rust that is eating the sharpness of our wisdoms, of our intelligence. Eventually, you're not going to be very reasonable. You're not going to be very smart. And all you want to think about is just to cause some violence to happen to someone. So that's anger, all right? Any questions? Of course, you can um, write in the comments. I'm looking at the comments at the moment, and I can see that, all right, there is no comment at the moment. Let's see, maybe we have more very soon. So what about resentment? Because people usually, um, not usually, but in many places, they put these two terms together, anger and resentment. What is it? So resentment is just negative feelings that happen because you feel that you are not treated fairly. Your life was treated unfairly, maybe because um, you expected something to happen, but people could not offer you that thing. Or maybe you were having something and that thing was taken away from you. And you didn't li actually like the situation, but you could not do anything about it. Eventually you keep thinking about that thing over and over and over again. And this is resentment, okay? So basically resentment is the situation that happened in the past that is still giving some negative effects to you at this particular moment. Well, <clears throat> I think uh, if I would make a very simple example, if you always have one question in your mind, why me? Why me? Why me? Why not someone else? Why is this person doing this to me? Why is that person treated me unfairly? Right? If this is happening to you, this is what they call resentment. So it's pretty clear that resentment is not yet anger. There's one thing that I usually say to people that we spend like 45% thinking about the past and another 45% and thinking about the future. So that's about 90%, right? The 45% that we usually think about the past majority of them is this resentment because we were worried about the situations that we could not handle very well and we wish we could change it 
or maybe we wish that something happened so that uneasy feeling is gone from our mind that's resentment all right so um there is a quote or a saying from the buddha that anger will never disappear as long as some thoughts about resentment are cherished in the mind but anger will disappear when some thoughts about resentment totally disappear from the mind so if you put it this way resentment they are usually causes and maybe the one of the main causes of anger that we have but this is anger is so kind of accumulated so maybe some someone did something negative to you and eventually you started to dislike that person you don't actually hate that person but when something happens whenever you see that person um, got promoted maybe happy or um, joyful then you, you you don't feel good because you know that person doesn't deserve that maybe you yourself should deserve that or maybe just that person someone else would deserve that but not that particular person that irritation may lead to anger at any time because you see that people that you do not like is feeling happy and you feel that this is not fair right so resentment can lead to anger at any particular moment and if you are able to release those resentment in the mind then anger will easily disappear from the mind for sure okay but how maybe you ask me how then we got another questions someone sent these questions to me is anger internal or external what do you think do you think anger is internal or do you think anger is external yeah because someone claim or someone believe that if um, you know usually we get angry because someone did something negative to us right something bad is happening but you know usually when something bad is happening you get angry many times you're getting angry with someone just someone think about it people are not getting angry at the sun <laughs> suppose that uh, like a few days ago i was in africa and suddenly maybe i was exposed to the suns too much i don't get angry at the sun right but maybe i would get angry at people that put me in the sun but I, i'm not getting angry at anyone <laughs> this is just an example uh right right or what about um you were in your office and suddenly uh, you you slam the door and then the door hit one of your fingers your, your thumb and then you get injured are you going to get angry at the door nobody usually nobody with sane <laughs> is going to get angry at the door right normally we get angry at a person and that's why people say that anger should be something external and not internal so what do you think do you think anger is internal or external well in buddhism we believe that the mind which is like software of a body which is like a computer machine this software has viruses so if your software works properly you don't actually have um, like degradation of computer performance of body performance maybe you're going to be able to work many hours a day without being distracted at all and maybe you can be happy all the time without being sad or suffered but somehow we have viruses and there are three viruses 
three kinds or three big viruses in the mind. The three big bosses, you can call them three big bosses. And the first one is anger. One of the reasons that we have a little proof about anger is you can feel bad all alone. You actually need someone to make you feel bad, right? When we are alone, if we do not have any viruses, maybe we do not actually meet anyone for a week. You were kind of cast away somewhere in a very isolated island, but you can still feel bad. And you're not going to get angry at the sun, you're not going to get angry at the beach, but you're going to get angry at yourself. So anger is something that is very effective between beings and the last being is yourself. So when you are alone, when you have nothing to do, you feel bored, you feel irritated, you feel like there's something more. And this, this thing that causes anger to be triggered is a virus that is called anger itself. Actually, uh, the technical term is called dosa. And this dosa makes you feel angry in different levels. We're going to talk about that level or those levels later on. The second virus is craving. We want something more and we sometimes feel like what we have isn't enough. For example, you have a car and suddenly when you know that your friends are having better car. You started to feel like, hey, what about if I will have a better car myself, will I be more happy? And that thought will appear over and over and over again. Then eventually you get a car and then you'll be happy for three months. And someone else started to get a newer car. And then you started to have that questions again. What if I have a better car, the latest car, will I be happy? What if I have the better phone, the latest one, will be more happy. So this thought will usually come to you again and again and again. You may say that, hey, but if someone shows you nothing, if you are alone, maybe you're on a mountain, you'd actually see those advertisements or people show you a new phone or a new car at all. You will still be um, controlled by craving. Actually, you are under the control of the craving anyway, but it is not going to be developed into jealousy. It's not going to be developed into like envy. That is something uh, more intense. But you started to feel like, hey, but what if this happened? What if that? So we human being is never really satisfied with what we have. And this is how those viruses or gilesas are controlling our mind. And the last one is ignorance. Ignorance is the, the thing that prevented you from knowing the truth, from knowing that this is the truth and this is not. So everything you know will be um, inaccurate. Things become uh, right, become wrong, wrong become right, uh, should become should not, and should not become should. Good become bad and bad become good. And these are viruses in the mind. But when we have viruses in the mind, our mind become unclear. This is like we wear glasses, but our glasses are dirty. Or maybe muddy, dirty, color. And the glasses that we wear, once we look through the glasses, the word that we see is not going to be accurate, right? So basically you can say maybe it's something not internal but not external but it sits in the middle of your perception. Right. Your perception is distorted because your mind isn't clear. It's like you look through a window and that window hasn't been cleaned at all for a few months. Eventually the pic every picture that you see looks unclean. Right? So, definitely, there's nothing wrong with the world. There's nothing wrong with people. Okay, we're going to talk, going to talk about that later on. Like, oh, people are like this, they are like that, and maybe they're causes of anger. 
but it depends on how you choose to react. Everything that comes to your mind, you always have two choices, whether you will react in a positive way, in a negative way, or or no. <laughs> Maybe you don't react at all, but if you do not react at all, it depends on how you keep the emotional feelings that happens in the mind. If you choose not to react, but then you accumulate that anger, that frustration, that is also what I consider negative reaction because you, you deserve to do something better. And this positive reactions and negative reactions is not on the perspective of anyone, but on your perspective. Anything that you do and your mind have higher quality, anything you do. So this is called positive. Pers um, but anything that you do and your mind is degraded, that your mind loses value, this is something negative. Okay? All right. So I think this question is pretty clear, right? Is anger internal or external? Of course, if your mind is clear, if you are happy, you know, people make small mistakes, you don't actually care about them. But if your mind feels unhappy, you're going to care, you're going to um, be very sensitive to every little details of anyone's mistakes, right? So your mind is everything. It depends on how your mind is. And it's very important that we take care of the mind so that our mind is ready to face any circumstances that is going to happen to your life. We can't control anything. We can't control things around us. We can't control the world. We can't control the sun. I was burned by the sun and I cannot control it. That acceptance will eventually help the mind to let go. But usually the mind cannot let go. And we're going to talk next, why is that? Okay. All right, so yeah, I can see that there are like a few more people. We have uh, Bruno, and yeah, usually we have Bruno many times, and Lupna from Egypt as well. All right, so. Um, this is about anger and resentment and I got a list of questions and this list of questions I'm going to answer them at the moment if you have any additional questions you can also share with me all right and um, now I'm going to continue <laughs> because there are like a very long list of questions in fact since when do we learn to get angry? Do we learn to get angry since birth? Or do we have that anger ever since we were born the other way? Actually, babies, you can imagine babies. Babies, they can smile, they can laugh at anything so simple. So babies do not have much anger or they are not actually um, react so much to when someone do something uh, very bad maybe they feel sad maybe they feel uncomfortable but they're not going to develop into the level that they want to take revenge or um, yeah they they, cho they just choose to react based on uh, something is happening to them at the moment. So even though you can be the baby's father or maybe the mother, but if you do something that makes the baby feel uncomfortable, the baby will cry, right? But the baby will not actually just remember that, okay, this guy is labeled as bad. And when that guy appears, the baby will cry. Well, this is by learning, in fact. But Anger is something that we learn ever since we were young. Every time that you wet your diaper and maybe your mom didn't come to change it very soon and then you have to be crying for hours, that is how uncomfortable feelings and maybe 
resentment is accumulated in the mind and if it is not released properly that baby may grow up and become someone that can be very sensitive and very irritated to something very simple they, that person can get angry very easily think about another baby okay this is another example the baby that every time he or she wet his diaper but the parents come almost immediately and change the diaper so that the baby doesn't have to sleep in a wet diaper will these two baby grow up having the same habits or different what is your answer <laughs> possibly different right the two babies the first one always have to sleep with wet diapers and we sometimes with some poops the other babies always sleep with clean diapers and maybe if the baby will wet the diaper parents will come almost immediately to change it the ba baby doesn't have to cry that much these two babies are going to grow up having different personality, having different characters and habits. But if the parents do not treat them very well or unfairly, for example, a family, they, they have two kids, but usually um, the first one gets everything. Maybe the first one is much more obedient and have better school performance, better at sport, and the, the second one is kind of lazy <laughs> and naughty. And parents do not actually treat the kids fairly and give everything to the first one. That resentment is being accumulated and to the second one, right? So the second will likely to, to get angry easier than the first one so of all the three viruses anger will be created will be accumulated very quickly ever since we were young but greed that is when we about to go to work we have to work for ourselves and we started to feel like hey i work a lot but you give me so small money why is that? It, that resentment is going to cause you to be a little bit more greedy. Like, oh, I deserve to have something more. I, I, I should have more. <laughs> Ignorance. Ignorance is when you have more and more and more an inaccurate confidence in yourself. It's like you believe that you know everything, but you know nothing. We talk about the Justin Kruger experiment before, right? That 90% or maybe 80% of people um, that is smarter or the smartest group. Okay, if you have a diverse group of people, 80% of the top 20 smartest one will just claim that they are not the smartest. There, there's something that they need to learn more. Why they 20% of the most incapable ones or the least smartest will claim that they know everything or they know better than the previous group. That is called ignorance. Okay. All right. So the next questions. Are there any different levels of anger? Okay, this is going to be fun at the moment. Um, okay, we have a question from Domingo. How to help someone we love that is feeling resentment and even they do not know why they feel it internally and externally? I know they cannot change it if they do not want it and take the steps for it. Nevertheless, somehow, is there any way you think to push them to go out of it? or to take any first move. This can be so difficult. Sorry for complex questions, okay? So uh, the question is, someone is feeling resentment 
and you want to help the person and you know that if the person doesn't help him or herself there is no help well we have to understand that the resentment is something that happened very much in the past and people fear that either it is going to happen to them again or they, they were clinging to the feeling so much they can't actually get out of the loop they wanted to change the, the past and they keep blaming themselves um, my suggestion is if people never really practice at all mindfulness and meditation for example their mind is going to be shifted all the time to the past or to the future and not at the present when people practice more mindfulness and meditation their mind comes back more at the present if your mind ha is very weak and you know like you try to talk to that person you can easily observe try to talk to the person but always he drag you back to the same old conversation what is this happening to me that person is not good that person hurt me and every time you try to change the topic that person goes back to the resentment again and again you know that the mind of the person is pretty weak so one thing that you can suggest the first move is maybe just to to practice something very simple some simple mindfulness practice something that helps the person to stay more at the present so that the mind becomes stronger and when the mind becomes stronger then the second exercise is people that usually have resentment it's kind of severe resentment they don't actually believe that something good can happen to their life so what you, what about trying to actually um, create some positive environment to the person somehow there is one practice that i usually recommend to people is first every day try to talk about one positive thing and maybe try to write down one positive thing about person around him or her you know this is like a practice this is like an exercise for the mind so the mind also have some moment that is not going to be negative but going to be positive so we have two dimensions here the dimensions about um, time the perspective of time and another perspective of positivity and negativity and you have to do both okay the time you have to shift to the present which mindfulness and meditation practice will help and second about the positivity positivity and negativity what about you come up with some exercises every day you have to talk about one positive thing maybe for five minutes maybe for one story you have to write out in a book you have to post on your Facebook anything of something positive maybe you can give some reward to the person if you can write me 10 positive story I will give you I will treat you a very good dinner right or maybe I will take you to Spain <laughs> you live in Spain Domingo or somewhere else I don't know so these two exercise to come back to the present and also to stay more with positive stories positivity will help people to um, release and let go of their resentment okay so are there any different levels of anger of course and I find this one amazing this is an amazing list very super details on how uh, you know like different levels of anger can be categorized so the first one is just frustration or just resentment you have resentment you keep blaming yourself you have uh, frustration something happening to you at the moment you know when people have a lot of resentment they are frustrated very easily and they can be annoyed by many little things just by the room is too warm and maybe uh, some traffic is um, too much then you can get angry you can get irritated people who have less resentment is not going to be very sensitive to negativity 
right? So that frustration is the basic level. But then sometimes this can be accumulated. I would say that there are two roads, okay? The first road is every time you have anger, you keep it with yourself. You don't actually release in a proper way. We're going to talk about releasing because this is another question. Is expressing your anger released to someone else is a good practice or not? <laughs> but you have to release. How? Okay, if you accumulate anger in yourself, that will always lead to violence. And this violence will increase in different levels. Second level is um, it shows on your face. <laughs> you have an angry face and people will know that you are angry at the moment. It shows on your face. People, well, some people can have a poker face and they can hide their feeling very well, but most people, every time they feel happy, every time they feel sad, every time they feel joyful, every time they feel afraid, everything shows on their face. And I think human is the only species that can express over 100 or more different emotional feelings on their face. The other species, we don't know. Maybe we hear from their uh, voice, but not really from their face, right? And the third level is when you get angry very much and you started to have trembling lips. It's like you wanted to say something, but you cannot say at the moment. Maybe your mind is ready to feel it, or maybe you don't actually pick the right word to say it. But it's it, it just going from your face to your lips at the moment, about to be released at any particular moment. So step number four, it is being released. So you start saying something negative, some harsh words, something that represents violent feelings in your mind okay uh, so number five is <laughs> it goes too much so you you feel like only thoughts are not enough only verbal actions they are not enough so it has to be bodily actions so you started to feel like what if i can punch something what if i can punch a wall what if i can hurt myself and you'll start to look for a weapon. But this weapon, it doesn't actually mean that you're going to grab a gun, but something that will lead to any kind of violence. Maybe some people, okay, I'm looking for a weapon to release my anger. Could be like throwing a table or smashing your room or televisions or something like that. So this is the, the meaning of weapon here. <laughs> I just don't want to change the word because this happens in the original text. So I just keep them there, okay? But once you look for the weapon, if you get angry more, then you need to release on a being, okay? A being. Maybe you're going to grab it and the next level, number seven, you're going to lift it. I, I think everyone's seen that scene before, right? Some people are lifting like a stick, about to hit, but doesn't do it. So that is the, another level of anger. You, you are threatened people that, okay, now I feel angry so much, I'm going to hit you. It could be your fist. I'm going to punch you, but you don't do it because the level of anger is not too much so that you can do it. <laughs> Maybe you still have some concerns in the mind. Maybe you are afraid. If you do it, it will lead to irreversible or super negative consequences you have to bear. The person in front of you is your president of your country and you want to punch that person on the face. What if you know that if you punch that person on the face, you'll be jailed for, forever or maybe indefinitely? Who knows, right? So you just threaten to punch the person, but you don't do it. Maybe you just um, put in jail for a few days and they release you. <laughs> so that is the next level of anger. But when it is more, are you going to do it for real? There's going to be blood. <laughs> There's going to be war. There's going to be violence. And you start making some wounds, okay? Giving weapons to others, giving to your friends, making some wounds. 
and break some bones. <laughs> that's why I said that this, this is very interesting because it gives super details of how how we can develop anger in different levels. Break some bones and cut some parts of the body and even kill a person. So when the anger is too much, then someone is going to die. And we, we, we actually seen this many times, right? Just because two person uh, have some fight with each other, maybe on a highway, this happened a lot in my country. And a person just grab a gun and shoot. But once the shot is done, the person feel pleased for some moment and that person feel guilty later on. I shouldn't do it. And usually most people who been through this um, anger and they cannot control it, they feel guilty, they, feel, they regret later on. All right, so, um, and the next level is maybe you kill the person, you're so angry and you kill yourself. So that's the highest level. We love our life the most. So making a suicide or killing yourself is the kind of the highest or the greatest, <laughs> the biggest, okay, the biggest um, karma, negative karma caused by anger, killing yourself. So these are different levels of anger and we should be aware about our own level. You know, if you never leave any weapon on your hand, then you are still manageable, everything is still under control. But if your lips are trembling a lot and you're not even aware about that, eventually it can develop into something higher. So you have to actually keep it minimum or just only the first level. I'm pretty sure. You may ask me, what about we have zero at all? Is it possible? Well, yes, but difficult. I would say we have those. So if we can kind of refine the first level into something smaller, maybe you have 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, until 1, then let's keep it to that level. I still have anger. If you make me feel angry, I get angry at you. <laughs> Right, so, but um, my anger, these days, I could manage it much better. I still remember before my ordination, when I just a normal person, I was, I reached the level that I was about to lift my fist and punch someone on the face, and I even did that. I even punch someone on the face, injure some people. That was before my ordination. That never happened. It has never happened for 11 years. <laughs> in in four, four days, I'm about to turn um, and complete my 11 wasa as a monk. And so this is not happening. Never punch anyone on the face. <laughs> All right, so um, next, but if we, if we will actually combine, because there are too many levels into three main categories, then we have frustration, we have violence, and then we have greed. So frustration usually happens. So this is the basic level. But violence is like you, you want something bad to happen. You want something bad to happen to yourself, to people around you, to people that you don't like, to people that have the issues with you, have a beef with you. That's violence and grudge. Like you keep thinking about hurting that person the whole time. And this is the future. If I meet that person tomorrow, I'm going to punch the person on the face. If I meet this person uh, next year, I'm going to say something so this person will not get the, the job that he or she wants. So that will lead to revenge or that's like you're holding grudge against each other. This is very, very dangerous.
because in Buddhist belief, this is going to cause a cycle of destruction. You get angry, you hurt people. People get angry, they hurt you back. And then you get angry again, you hurt people. People get angry, they hurt you back. And this is going to become an endless loop, never ends. Okay, all right, so the next question is, what are the main causes of anger? Well, um, we talk about those viruses already, but usually anger that leads to higher violence, they are caused by beings. They are caused by, oh, could be animals, but usually human beings somehow. No one is going to get angry at the sun, so that we are not going. We are going to destroy the sun, even though the sun is so hot. It is going to make um, the ice in the North Pole melted, and we have um, global warming. But we're not going to get angry at the sun, right? We're not going to get angry at tornado, even though these days many countries are being attacked were destructed by those crazy wind. But no one is holding the grid against tornado, right? But usually the causes of anger are people. And these are 10 causes of anger. People that hurt you in the past. That's number one. And the second, people that are going to hurt you. You know that, okay, these people, even though they haven't done it, but they're going to do something bad to you, then you get angry. Could be, right? And the third one, people that are hurting you. So <laughs> we are completing the three tenses, past, present, and future, right? All right, then next, we have the perspective of time already, time axis. The second axis is Persons, people who are hurting someone that you love, that you care about in the past. People who are going to hurt, right? So, okay, you heard the news. You know, maybe um, your friend or maybe a family member is being in ransom, being kidnapped. Nothing happened yet, but you know that... Um, the bad guy is going to do something with uh, your family member and maybe your friend very soon. It's yet to happen and you get angry, right? So the last one is people who actually are hurting someone that you love. Of course, it's going to cause you some anger for sure. And next, people that are helping. So they may, these people can be good guys, but they, they are helping people that you hate. Or they are going to help someone that you hate, or they are helping someone that you hate. Even though this group of people are good guys, but you may have anger towards this, this group of people. Okay, if you take a look at the amount of sanity from the first one to the ten actually if you have um, like the least amount of sane sanity um, you're going to get you're going to be very unreasonable about judging about getting angry and then eventually you can get angry at some good guys just because they are helping people that you don't like. It's like the amount of anger is so much and you become super, super unreasonable. Okay, so we have different perspective. The first perspective is the time. And the second perspective is people that you care about. If they got hurt, then you don't like anything. And people that you don't like. So this is not a group of people. If someone is helping them, you don't like it. This is, these are 
main causes of anger these days. Think about it. It's happening this way, right? It is usually causes of resentment, causes of anger, mainly these days between beings. We're not going to get angry at televisions, but maybe someone in televisions. We're not going to get angry at the sun. Maybe someone is forcing us to stay in the sun for so long. Or what else? <laughs> We're not going to get angry at the sword, but people who use the sword or suppose that you cut yourself on one finger. When you accidentally cut yourself, maybe you get angry, right? You get frustrated. But you don't actually want to, okay, maybe you can will throw that knife away because that's the, res the result of your anger. But you start thinking about why is it person, the maker of the knife, make it too sharp? Or why that person asked me to cut vegetable, right? You're not going to hold grudge to the knife. You're not going to completely destroy it. That throwing of the knife somewhere is just the act that you choose to do because of the violent you have in your mind. You don't actually, <laughs> but instead you try to think about, hey, that person asked me to cut a uh, vegetable. So if that person didn't ask me to cut vegetable, I wouldn't cut myself, right? This is happening. So, um, if we actually make a little small conclusion, we have three main causes of anger. And this is because our mind is always craving for sensual pleasure. Okay, cutting yourself, you lose happiness. You lose pleasure because um, cutting yourself deteriorate that sensual feeling on your skin, right? Or if you get hurt, you lose happiness. As a result, you get angry. Or if you, the second one, you want to become someone. You want to be famous, you want to uh, be accepted, you want to teach, you want to show you how you are capable. But maybe someone says something bad about you. You're not capable, you're saying something wrong. You get angry. Or you are trying to reject something. I don't want this. I hate this. But someone says something the opposite. Don't hate it. This is good. And you get angry. Our mind has these three nature, and these three natures are causes of suffering. You're craving for something, you want to become someone, or you don't want something in your life. All right? So, what do we do if someone gets angry at you? All right. We have one more question from Risa. What coping skills or strategies can you do daily when a person you are angry at or resentful towards is someone you encounter every day? Okay. Even though you try to meditate to heal. Ah, so this is going to be um, the next two questions. What do you do when someone gets angry at you? <laughs> That's the first thing, all right? So, um, the Buddha, he mentioned that whoever doesn't flare up at someone who's angry wins a battle that is hard to win. Okay, think about everything in your life is a battle between good and bad, all right? When something happens, when someone is angry at you, it is very easy that your mind feels anger and probably you want to respond in a violent way because a, a monster in your heart is being triggered, it's going to come out. If a monster is just right in front of you, the little monster in your mind will be trigger, 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 being bigger, bigger, bigger. I usually share this one story to many people that there is a monster went into a castle and was sitting on a king's throne. 
the soldiers were seeing everything. But because the monster was so big and they could not hurt the monster at all, so all they could do is just to yell at the monster, to throw stone to the monster, and eventually the monster become bigger and bigger and bigger. Eventually the monster sat on the king's throne and the king returned to the castle. The king learned everything from the soldiers. But instead of yelling, instead of doing negative things to the monster, the king did something different. The king said to the monster, Hello, how are you? Are you hungry? Hey, soldiers, bring your food and serve the monster. Um, do you need anything, monster? Every time the king says something nice to the monster, the monster's body gets smaller. Eventually, the soldiers understood, and the soldiers started to do the same thing. Hello, monster. How are you? Are you feeling happy? Let me massage you. Let me serve you some uh, hot toes and maybe some food and some drink. Let's talk about something nice. And eventually, the body of the monster becomes smaller and smaller and smaller, and eventually, the monster turns into just a normal human being. So you can see that this is the best way to deal with people who are getting angry at us. We might be very tempted to respond in a violent way. But if we do it, the monster in our heart is going to get even bigger, right? And if you don't actually want to turn yourself to becoming a monster, then you have to consider this story. And um, in fact, there are also some things to consider here. What do you do when someone gets angry at you? Consequence, consider consequences if you get angry back. And this is not short-term consequences because, again, we have short-term consequences and long-term consequences. Short-term consequences, you're going to feel very glad if violence happens. But long-term consequences, you're going to feel very sad about your actions later on. And usually people cannot think about long-term consequences because they are blighted by their anger. And second, consider versions of people who are angry at you. You know, usually everyone in the world is beloved by someone. There's no, no, no bad, bad, bad person. Even pe people that you thought was the worst, maybe he or she was loved by his or her parents, right? So, because of the conflict happenings between you and that guy, doesn't mean that he is permanently bad. So that person might have some virtues. And if you can catch goodness in that person, the anger amount in your mind is less. And number three, just tell yourself that it all comes back to you. You have to shoulder all the consequences triggered by your anger and your actions and consider the karma. Maybe you are, you know, like facing this because the karma that you did in the past. Maybe this is the karma that you have, uh, the person have the good over your negative actions in the past. And this is why you are facing everything happening in the moment now, right? If you consider it this way, then you focus on creating better karma in the future. You are not try to change the karma in the past. And that's much better. You're going to feel much lighter if you can think about it this way. And consider what wise people will do. You know, every time you want to respond with violence, just think, okay, will smart people do this? <laughs> because usually smart people will do it another way. I'm pretty sure you can maybe imagine some examples. But people who are not wise probably will respond to a situation with the anger and that leads to some stupid or resentful feelings later on, right? And consider your past connection, like everyone have met each other. Maybe we were families before. So in Buddhist philosophy, everyone was in the same big family in the past. Maybe you and me, we were brothers and sisters. So Maybe you were even my mother in the past. And if you can think about it this way, oh, that person might have been my sister before. 
that person might have been my brother before. Your anger is not going to be too much. And maybe in the future, we're going to face, we're going to meet them again, right? And the next, just consider the benefits of compassion. If you are able to share your compassion, feelings on that person, that's going to be much better. And consider people based on composition of the four elements. What is this? <laughs> so, the, the Buddha said that when you're getting angry at someone, then you, you look into the detailed composition of the person. Are you getting angry with the hair? Are you getting angry with that cell? Are you getting angry with the skin? Are you going to get angry at intestine? So what? Right? Because people are just elements. <laughs> That's probably hard to understand. And, but if you can think about it this way, are you going to get angry at that cloth? It's because they dress that way? Are you going to get angry at the eyes or maybe the mouth because that people speak bad about you? No, but you're not getting angry at the body. So why are you getting angry at the moment, right? Because the mind can change the whole time. Maybe when people do something bad to you, but it doesn't mean that it's going to be bad forever. Everything can change. Even though they don't change their body, their mind can change. It's hard, I understand. And the last one, consider sharing and receiving for people. And, you know, People who actually do something bad to you, if you are courageous enough just to share something to the person, sharing means positive energy is being transferred from your mind to the person's mind. Um, if they say something bad about you, but you respond with some cookies, they say something bad about you, you share something nice to them. They do something bad about you, you are able to share your smile. And if you keep doing this for a week, I'm pretty sure that the person who are doing something, you know, like bad to you, is going to change their mind, um, little by little, one way or another, right? So stop anger with the wisdoms. The wisdoms to know that it is not about short-term consequences, but long-term consequences. The wisdom that I talk about previously. If you are able to be aware of some of them or all of them, then you are not going to get angry very easily because you are more reasonable. You don't act out of emotional feelings, but you act based on sensible logic, right? So what do you do when you get angry with someone? Number one, try to um, cultivate metta, and this metta means loving kindness. It means that, you know, uh, sometimes you feel like you struggle, but what if you think about it this way that everyone struggles? Everyone, no one in the world has found that genuine happiness. We struggle for finding that inner peace, that happiness. So if everyone struggles, when problems arise, then we are all kind of prisoners. So the Buddha said that, think about this word as a big prison, and we are prisoners. When something happens in the prison, you know, everyone suffers, maybe you don't actually want to get angry too much because eventually we should help each other to survive this prison, right? And second, cultivate karuna or compassion in the person that that person gets angry at you and you are getting angry at a person, the situation is going to get worse. And if you actually slam your words in the person, he's going to be miserable. If he's like, um, in your eyes, a pathetic guy or something like that. But that is going to be worse for that person. Maybe the person will feel sad, maybe the feel, person will feel scared. That compassion, when you can feel it towards someone, this is the opposite of the anger in your mind. You're not going to get angry too much. And the third one, ubeka, which means equanimity. You know, something happens to you, you learn to actually pay no attention. You learn to ignore. You learn to provide no response. 
you learn to let it go. That is the meaning of ubeka, or just let it go from the mind. And number four, don't think about that person too much. You know, so every time something bad happens, just think about something else. Anger is very quick to develop, but also quick to release. If you are able to hold it for some, sometimes like, like 10 seconds and you don't respond immediately, your anger reduces to half, you know. Even though it's, it's there, but it's not going to stay at the top level. It's reduced to half. And consider, <laughs> I, I say cultivate, but consider, consider the person's karma that that is because of the karma. I, I already shared it about this in the previous slides, so I'm going to skip it. All right, so the Buddha said that holding on to anger is just like grasping like hot coal with your hand. You intend to throw that hot coal to someone, but eventually the hot coal is being dropped to yourself and hurting you. When you get angry at someone, you want to transfer your anger with violence. You try to respond in negative ways to a person. They all come back to you because your heart knows that the consequences, the effects of anger are not good. So when you don't consider this fact and you throw everything to person, eventually you feel you hold everything. You feel regretful later on. You're going to um, feel guilty, feel bad about your own actions, okay? So, should we express our anger? You have a question, because according to many anger management lessons or scheme, expressing your anger is something doable. But I would say that don't do it. Why? Every time you express your anger, you are creating bad habits. And these bad habits coming back to you, controlling you, telling you that every time you get angry, you're going to punch the wall, you're going to hurt your hand. Or every time you get angry, you're going to tear a book, you're going to throw something. If you keep doing this a lot, this is going to become habits that you are not being aware, even though the amount of anger is less, getting less and less and less, but even a small trigger will cause you the same behavior. So you don't actually need a bigger amount of anger anymore just to do the same kind of violence, right? So are there any positive effects of anger in personal development at all? Well, personal development means that everything you do, your mind becomes stronger. But anger is an attribute of a weak. It means that you let that virus called anger control to control your mind. But if you are able to fight with viruses, you become strong. And forgiveness is the attribute of a strong. So I don't see any benefits of having anger or um, of course maybe some people will say having anger makes us feel stronger but we don't actually need to feel strong that way there are many other ways to make us feel strong without resentment without negative effects to our own mind of course maybe today you respond to people with your anger you fight people you stay at the top you become the strongest one but one day, you're going to feel um, regretful about your own action later on. So even though you become stronger in the sense, but you hide the weakest link, the weakest point in your mind. You just suppress it. And eventually, you're going to express your anger more and more and more because you just want to cover the weak point that you cannot just release, let go, and forgive and accept something. The fact that you cannot accept something, you have to cover with something else. And many people cover this fact with anger. 
Okay, so this is going to be my conclusion. What is the best to to win over anger? There are four things. First, mindfulness. Every time something bad happens, do not respond. Uh, do not react immediately, but think about it. Provide proper responses and responses that are not going to lead you to destruction or negative path. Okay? The amount of time that you can hold the, um, how you are able to change the decision so that the result is going to be positive instead of being negative is called mindfulness. Mindfulness means that you know what you are doing, but not only that, you are aware about results or consequences of what you are doing as well. All right, so mindful about your action means when something happens, you don't actually know, oh, this is happening, this is not enough. But if you respond this way, it's going to be okay or not, all right? And second, loving kindness and compassion. If you meditate with loving kindness meditation a lot, then you have much less anger in the mind because your mind is used to positivity more than negativity. And the third one is patience. You can win over anger with patience, but this sense you need to learn to let it go. Again, if you keep accumulating everything to yourself, eventually it is going to explode. And that is not good. And the fourth one is understanding. You understand better. You're not going to be like uh, just a kid that get annoyed by anything anymore, but when you are older, and that's why in many places, the elders do not get angry too much, right? Because when the elders have grown and maybe at the very last moment of life, they've been through so many things they could accept that they cannot control anything at all. And that acceptance will help them to understand. And when they can understand, they can let it go. And when they can let it go, no anger is left in the mind. So. This is what I'd like to share with you today. I hope um, it's covered many questions that are being uh, delivered to me and also some of the questions, the two questions from Domingo and also from Risa. you have any more questions, all right? <laughs> you have all one or two minutes <laughs> for doing so. Um, we're not, pr uh, I think we don't have a live session next week because next week I'm going to go to um, Slovakia and also Austria so I'm going to be away from this for a week and if you have any further suggestions about what we should cover on the upcoming lives you can also suggest here or maybe you can also write to our staff of the page or the group Okay, and if you feel that this video is going to be useful for your friends, for people that you care about, or those who have problems managing their own anger, please consider sharing this video with, with them, okay? And thank you for your attention. Thank you for staying with me, and I hope um, what I'm sharing with you makes some sense to you and help you to uh, understand the benefits of controlling anger in the mind okay so thank you and see you later next time goodbye